day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. That took me a minute. You know okay. what I'm saying? To honestly believe that a man died 2,000 years ago and then got up. What a revelation that is. And, and, yes, and, the, and the mind cognitively, the mind rejected that. That's why we kind of fiddle with some other stuff like the healing and stuff because we think that ain't really happening. But if he got up from being dead, he can do anything. Right. So my point, my point of saying is that in that, that Romans 10 out of 10, I don't see the part about the immediately stop doing this, this, and this. Uh, what I see is, and I like when I use Romans 10 out of 10 is this. I confess, if, if you confess your mouth to the Lord Jesus and believe your heart that God is raised from the dead, that I should be saved. I like to revert back to that saying that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that now comes and dwells in you to change and save you. In other words, now you're trying to introduce a power that came on the day of Pentecost into somebody ready to receive him and then allow his power to change you as well as that person from glory to glory to glory, right? And then we talk about the fact that as a person has to die daily, you got to die daily, I got to die daily. Die daily to what? To the things that I fall short on. But I need to, if, I think the problem I'm saying is, if I come in there and minister the gospel and I'm saying that a person has to change right then and there, no. must stop all sin. And, and knowing that the body of Christ has people full of sin, going into that church every Sunday or Wednesday, full of sin with ah. and all the other stuff, how the fact we're going to tell somebody else, you got to stop sinning right then and there. The body of Christ is not full of sin. <laughs> you, you, the church don't want to be full of sin. The the church, church. I guarantee you that the body of Christ is not full of sin. Amen. There, there, I guarantee you. See, we talk about yeah, we, we it's, when we, when we, we, it's going to church and yeah. people are going in the building. Yeah. The sin that dwells in their flesh is still there and they're working on it daily. Yeah. The, the, I, when, I, when I try now, uh, uh, Pastor Taylor, I think more in terms of the gospel of reconciliation and being born again. Born again. Uh, when we were born, we, and we have been literally born, we were born into this world system where we can't gain contact with this material realm. Right. When we we're born again, we we're actually born into the fellowship of the Spirit of God. Yes, sir. And that's what I that's what I, my focus is. My focus is that Jesus Christ basically died and was for the sake that we might have this restored relationship with the Father that we enjoyed in the Garden of Eden. Right. And I believe that that actually occurred spiritually, we were reconnected. Yes, sir. What results from that spiritual reconnect is that transformation that you speak in terms of the renewing of the mind. Truly, we are we have become uh, new creations because prior to that, we were spiritually separated from the Father. Right. But this new creation now connected spiritually with the Father and now in the process of having the mind renewed, which is a process that had to take place by the Holy Spirit, by God himself. He's, he's but, the one that's working. Elder, question, I'll throw it back at you, though, but when this is referring to Romans 7, when it says the things that Paul was talking about, the things I do, I would not. Yes. But I do it. And then I find out it's not me to do it, but the sin that dwells in me. The, 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 and, and, and he goes on to say in that scripture, which really to me was profound, and I, I, of course it was uh, uh, later. And it, it's recently that I understood that. He said, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Right. Jesus Christ. And, and, and that is the, the the issue is the suit that we got when we got him. So so you know so what I'm the suit has some issues. It's got got the whole thing. The cabinet I'm throwing in there is Paul has been delivered from from his his, his sinful life, connected yes. now through Jesus Christ. But he's still telling you, I'm struggling with this, 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 and this. And, and he said that it's not him that struggles it, but it's actually the body that he's contained in, that vessel, that, that, that human side of him, yeah. that flesh. Exactly. It, it, so, so it's so not him anymore. 
Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I'm talking about when you're trying to introduce somebody to the body of Christ, you introduce them first of connecting that spirit to God. That's right? it. That's and it. then let God in work with that person. Well, you know, he does work with, but he works through us. So he just teaches and preaches and passes and follows. We, so we much so, we, we were so we're all we're all connected to the spirit, led by the spirit, and we're gonna work toward respecting that person. But uh, 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 it's a, I agree, it's the process. My thing is that now I'm led to preach the gospel. Yes, sir. And then in a in, in a nutshell, and I know I have already been encountered by people who, and I'm not asking questions that I'm I'm not gotten. I'm asking questions on cheap. I'm cheating and get stuff from y'all <laughs> so I can have something to take exactly. back to the people that can be. And I think the same problem with the racist too, right? I'm talking about the people that got racism. That's stuff that they got in them. And, and we need to, to show the love of Christ so that they can understand that you need to love your brother and your sister. But I think that it, it, one thing that um, uh, uh, Bishop talked about is being able to make the distinction between you and the in the, in, the, in the flesh. And I think that if, when they're spoken to in that manner, that they're able to make the distinction between who they are and wh- how they really are and what they are maybe still ex- feeling or or what their, you know, their, 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 their fleshly desires may be. Because these people are programmed this way. Their minds, a lot of them, and we talked about this last week, their oh, minds are here. They, this has become a part of their value system. Yeah. And I have begun to embrace that. For me to walk up to an 80 year old white man and say, you know, you're my brother. And he's you're my brother. Stop. Man, I got it. And chances are he's not going to receive that because he never had a black guy come up and tell about you, my brother. He's going to see you like what he's been taught you were. He sees flesh. He remembers he scripture. flesh. And he remembers he scripture. In the flesh. He responds in the flesh. Yeah. He remembers you know, scripture and said, don't look at the power of the parents. Go ahead. You are unwise if you walk up to him and say, you're my brother. That is not the way you need to approach that. <laughs> you see, you see, a lot of stuff we bring on ourselves because we, we don't understand. If you're dealing with a problem that you know has been there for a long time, you, you can't just you can't just rush in it. Jesus doesn't t- t- start dealing with the woman at the way about fornication. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> he don't start dealing with about, about adultery. Come on. He starts a conversation with her. You know, they said, well, first of all, why are you talking to me? You ain't supposed to be talking to me. Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah. He, he, he finds an inroad in it. What you got to be sensitive to it is that the Spirit of God lead you on how you're going to address the issue. You can't just, you can't just, you can't be in control. And what I find in a lot of times is that we are not sensitive to the Spirit of God and waiting to let Him lead us to that right way to be able to get to, to enter into a conversation that can allow you to. Sow some seeds to say I'm something. Come on, brother. So my expectation when I sow seeds now is not that I'm going to see some result. Come on now. Farmers don't look for the same day they sow. I'm, I'm going to throw the seed. If results come right then, fine if it don't. Because I understand that life don't work like that. Come on, brother. <laughs> That's why Good so morning. Farmer don't do that either. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. How you all doing today? Great, sir. Good, yeah. good. Yeah, you know, I have to kind of watch what I say now because now it's no longer just us. Some of this stuff is being broadcast live and being put out there. So I have to temper what I say and I have to really be careful because I don't want to offend anyone. I mean, our our speech and how we approach subjects now is kind of being directed and, and kind of being being controlled by forces outside of ourselves, which, which kind of is over time is kind of teaching us to conform to what they want us to conform to in a way. I'll say that. I'll say this, that um, he's the light of the world. We introduce him to light. Light exposes darkness. The Bible said men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Yes, sir. Once you, if you stay close to the light, it's going to expose and show you all of your imperfections in those things. And so we, we're, we're trying to introduce them to the light. And then the more they hang around that light and that light exposes, then I believe that is what's going to draw them to where they need to be. Yeah. Uh, we talked about we talked about homosexuality. We talked about these other things. But see, I'm gonna tell you something too. And, and the racism, saying, oftentimes people know what they're doing is wrong, 
and yeah. they and they but they decided to go ahead and do it anyway even though they feel in their hearts they know it's not right you come in the door to you fornicating you doing these saying you know it's wrong you know you know idiot no. but therefore they know they need to repent but if you're involved in a homosexual relationship and you don't believe it's wrong then there's no need for repentance. Why would you repent from something? Why would I repent from being monogamous and truthful and faithful to my wife for 35 years? I don't feel like I need to repent from that because I don't feel like it's wrong. So so you deal in situations where people, you know they're doing things that's not right. Then people believe doing things that they think is right. So how can I'm gonna come to you and tell you that marriage is not right? You need to repent from that. You need to start fornicating. Well, that doesn't even make sense because, because, because it is something that's right. So. We're dealing with two different subjects when you go there for me. For me, you're going to two different subjects with all the other sins and sins like racism. That may be something that they don't see as wrong. They've been they've been conditioned to think that they're less these folks are less than humans and they, they can't be taught. They have to be trained and put in institutions and 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 and, and have vocations because they, they don't have any cognitive ability to think and to reason. And so I believe that I've been taught it all my life. That's just, I don't believe I'm wrong in that. So so why would I feel like I need to repent from it? But as you expose them to the light, and then it comes down to once they're in the light, if you begin to ask me questions, then I have to go back to the glorious light of the gospel and show you the truth of what the Bible teaches. And then you allow that, that illumination is gonna come in or not. That's not my job to be the Holy Ghost. Like the brother was saying, we have to be sensitive to the spirit as to what to say, when to say it, how to say it, what analogies to use, because he knows what, what avenues is going to touch that particular person. We don't. We think we do, but we don't. And our job is not the Holy Spirit. Our job is uh, we're, we're also the light of the world. So we bring, obviously, we expose things. I mean, we have to. It has to be a standard. And if you don't know what the standard is, then you're all over the place. So I think we do have an obligation to bring them to the light, but then too, there's that process that you're talking about today too, as 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 we don't say it anymore, but being converted, there's a conversion that takes place. Sometimes that's over time, yeah. but that's not a word that's used much in gospel circles anymore. Being talking about converted or being converted or conversions, but um, um, so I guess that's my two cents How about that. That's uh, so about five. Let me say this. Let me say this for uh, you gather out there. Uh, can you see this book? No, bring it closer to you. Now he going to share it in a minute. That's, he ain't shared it yet. No, because you got that virtual back. You got that virtual background. It's kind of fading in and out when Let's you try see. to show it. Oh yeah, how about now? Okay, white fragility. White fragility. Yeah. Right. Okay, let me tell you something. It is my opinion. That every black person on the planet ought to read that book. Every black person on the planet ought to read that book. Because in this world, you're going to be the inside of the, the whole system of whiteness. It means I am this. In the society, the whole ideology that allows prejudice to be put into discrimination and discrimination to be put into the law, and what's the put into the law? Turn that. Yes, turn around your mic. I'm systematic. There it is. Specific. This is the person who is going to, who is really, a, in a sense, a whistleblower. <laughs> There's something wrong with your mic. It's working now. It's working now, though. Said, this is the person who becomes, in a sense, a whistleblower and tells you everything there is about the inner workings of racism, about all the different versions of racism. Uh, the whole nine yards. Right. So, it, it, for me, I've read it, I've come to going back to it. Because now I begin to recognize a lot of things that I've seen on my job, in my community, it's everywhere. When I go and apply for a job, when I go to the bank, any, any institution, when I go to college, when I, who I, what college I can go to, get anything. See, it helps you to understand that you don't realize that there's no place that you can go to escape the institution of racism. Exactly. Exactly. 
is all flesh. And it that's why it's awful. Yeah. It is not, when you have people who are in, who have the position and the authority and the power to enforce discrimination. See, I can discriminate against you if I can pass no law against it. Yeah. And yeah. if I can't pass no law against it, it can't become institutional. But if I can write a law that prohibits you from voting. Come on now. Which it did from the Jim Crow laws and everything else. Yeah. Sure. Or if I can move, the, look, nowadays I can just move the voting, with the, the uh, polling booth or the voting booth, or you know, so you can't find it. Oh yeah. If yeah. I got the power to move the voting location, <laughs> and you show up in a place and well, I thought we both voted, we both needed you. And you have the thought to move it without telling me. <laughs> you have power then, then that's racism. That's racism. You know, the, the funny part is that <laughs> in reference to other world systems, we're still among the best. I think the United States form of government is still among one of the best forms in the, on the planet. But as it aligns itself with the kingdom of God, there's some things to be desired. It leaves a lot to be desired. But that's true for all systems. My, 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 I guess my striving lately has been just to see how I, as a member of the kingdom of God, interface with this place called the United States of America. Uh, the history of the United States of America is probably pretty much the same as any conquered nation. They conquered it and they're occupying it. And they're doing everything they possibly can to maintain control of it. But how does that align itself with the righteousness of God and the kingdom of God? And how do I interface with that system? And that's what, and that's why I wanted, go ahead. Just, well, God is not interested in the United States of America. Say that again. He says God is not interested in the United States of America at all. He's interested God in his soul. God is interested in his kingdom. Yes. He ain't interested in Rome. He ain't interested in Russia. Come on, he's in his kingdom. And so I'm not worried about the United States of America. I'm worried about myself as part of God's kingdom, and I'm worried then collectively about the people who comprise that kingdom. Exactly. This king, the United States of America, is under the control of the God of this world. So the expectation is never going to be fixed. So we can expect that racism is going to be a part of the mix. Well, well, I want to say here. you ain't gonna never solve racism yeah, and, well, racism yeah. and homosexuality. You ain't gonna never solve that. Yeah, and what I want to be able to say is that I like the the so we was keen on the the parable of the sower. That what you can do is keep planting the seeds in the hearts of believers and unbelievers. Hopefully, those that God gives an increase to, those are people in the system. Yeah. If 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 somebody's going to affect change, is somebody who's been converted with the power to yeah. make the change. But your part is just plant the seed, sow the seed. And in love. Go. In love, yeah. Because that makes a difference. But you see what I'm saying, Elder? To me, it's like, if, oh, yeah. if you said it, you, Elder said it uh, a couple of weeks ago, Bishop, he said if, if our president and presidents, as they go through, it turn their life over to Christ, that becomes a powerful message of the gospel. Yeah. I mean, I mean, honestly speaking, I'm praying for Mr. Trump to get saved. I would love to see that guy get saved because he has a global witness right now. Everybody's eyes are on him, whether they approve him or disapprove him, the whole world is looking at him. So if he could, if the Lord could touch this man's heart and actually save his soul, I mean, connect him, reconnect him to the Father, man, the, 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 the strides that this nation would make would be overwhelming. That's what I'm but saying. But the witness to the world system, the witness to the world system would be on unparalleled my sincere prayer is that he touches me uh i mean that's the reason he's in place i don't think that but how do you know he's not saying he one morning became president i think god's allowance is that trump is president what he does with him is yet to be seen but the church's job i think the church is the body of christ's job is to literally pray for this guy's salvation we, or, or or to be or i think what jim has asked the question just in case, because we don't know if he's been obeyed in Christ. Who's that? You know the tree by the fruit? It is a tree is known by its fruit. <laughs> but, so that's how he's answering the question. But let's say he was just obeyed. That's funny. Because some, I mean, this, some people are obeyed. Dude, he, look, he's in competition with lying with his father, the devil. I mean, he, he's, he's like, he's trying to do, do 
you know, outdo him. Hey, hey. So in other words, what I'm hearing, I know this is going to sound strange, but anyway. So then you guys actually believe y'all can say who's saved and who ain't saved? Who is saving? I can't. <laughs> that's not a that's not a position I want to take up. To be honest with you, I don't I don't I want to be in charge of that category. Yeah, no, it, we but the reality of it is, is that the brother was saying he ain't bearing no fruit for salvation at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna argue that point. I ain't gonna argue with that now. But well, the Bible question. says who who can let say let who's going up and or who's going down. Let me ask you how do we then determine who we should have fellowship with? Say it again, huh? How do we determine who we should have fellowship with? I I, I, I honestly, I think if you have to be spirit led because I, I wouldn't have found this fellowship trafficking in the regular, you know, avenues of church. I, I wouldn't have found this one. I think that God literally will, if you're seeking after the truth, he'll put you in the path of it. it, it and, and, you know, that's why. After had that dream, so I can no. come here. <laughs> no, the reason, no, the reason I said that is this: is that the tells you that we should not believe every spirit. Come on, come on. Oh yeah, definitely. And that we should not have fellowship with darkness. Amen. Now all I'm saying is, you can't walk in that unless you have some kind of way of of. Uh, of this pre the, uh, discerning uh -huh. that this person is a person of darkness and not a person of light. Yes. Now, I, I think what oh. Jesus warns us about, he said, look, a good tree can't bring forth bad fruit. Come on. And a bad tree uh -huh. can't bring forth good fruit. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Now, that, that's just, that's the that's hardcore fact. So that's plain and simple. So, so <laughs> now listen, if a man won't open his mouth and testify that Jesus is Lord, Come that's on, a man. good sign he say. <laughs> if any one of y'all on this in this in this Zoom meeting opens your mouth and say that, that, that and say, if I ask you, is Jesus Lord, and you fail to embrace him as Lord, that's a good sign you ain't saying. Amen. That that's a great sign. That that's that's is a pro that's a proclamation. That's a declaration. That that is, is uh when, when I when I said when it, when you when uh, Jimmy made made the inquiry, I, I don't think my my mind went to like judgment, not not uh but the scripture said you shall be saved. So, so I think Paul said he present toward the mark. He said that the work that God had begun in him he would bring it to fruition. And so we're talking about a, a work that God actually accomplishes at some point in our lives post salvation. And I think the one thing we await, we await the redemption of the body, which is the, the final stage as far as uh, salvation is concerned. But as far as him being able to be saved, again, my greatest example of salvation, I think, in a sense, was when I read the story of David. I was so encouraged by David, David's story. It was overwhelming because I thought I had done more than I could do to get saved. And then I read David's story. It's like, yeah, I can make it. <laughs> David became my hero because the city was a man of God's own heart. But if you caught him in that span that we already talked about uh, uh, visibly, if you caught him right there in that little section when he was messing up, homeboy went to the extreme. Yeah. He, he, he did it up. And if you just saw him right there, it's going like, man, that dude is a wretch. He's a reprobate. But look what happened with him. The, the Lord said he called him the man of his own heart. So it's possible that this man in this process, it may be the reason he's there because he doesn't really have an affiliation with either party. You well, know, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you. Not in, that same, in that same vein, let me just ask a question. If we'd have been around Solomon in his latter days when he was going into the temples and he was uh, bowing down and worshiping to idol gods and he was satisfying his wives with all these idols, yeah. Would we have said he was saved? Or would we have said he wasn't saved as well? I mean, what would we have said? He was outright worshiping idol gods and building temples to them and offering up sacrifices to idol gods. Would we have said he was saved? Or would we have said he's not saved? I'm just asking. Well, God said he was going to rent the kingdom out. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, here, that's a, Jimmy, here, that's a good question. But let me tell you, let me tell you what Ezekiel would have said. What? Ezekiel would have said, if a man turned from his righteousness 
and commit sin. Uh oh, <laughs> look out now. Not the wisest man in the world. His righteousness won't fail. <laughs> Ezekiel would have said, it, it don't matter that he started out good. Yeah. But if a man if a man is righteous and he turned from his righteousness and commit sin, then his righteousness shall not be remembered. Not with none. Yeah. Right. Well, that, 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 that's, that's what the scriptures teach now. And if we take it cookie cut, cookie cut literally like that, then, 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 are you are you are you willing to go on record and saying that Solomon is in hell? No, I'm going to go on the record the saying that I that, that, that Ezekiel says. That okay. Solomon. Okay. <laughs> okay. Not me. <laughs> not me. <laughs> Ezekiel. But, but, and but, I agree with Ezekiel. Ezekiel okay. listen, and not only do I agree with Ezekiel about, about Solomon, I agree with Ezekiel about me. If Come I on now. Turn, I think that same scripture, doesn't that scripture also address of a man that lived a life of corruption in terms of righteousness that all that he had done in the past would be forgiven and forgotten? Yes, sir. So it's like this man could in his last few days or, or whatever, he could on that final hour call in the name of the Lord. We should, in according to the scripture, he'll be saved. So I think the church right now, God has given us a window of opportunity. And I am very pleased by that. That's why I'm asking all these questions, but I, I need to develop the word. I need to hear it and get clarity with it because I got to communicate it to people. It's time to go fishing, man. It, 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 it's, a, it's a good season to go ahead and start reaching some souls because I, I think God has given us that opportunity. This is the opportunity. Us the incentive. <laughs> this is the opportunity, Evan. Yeah, also, the great, also, one of our greatest responsibilities, I think, is to be a, a light in a dark place. Yeah, and I think even insects and animals have uh, uh, have the instincts to to focus on and be drawn by that light to be drawn mm -hmm. to the light. I think what we need to do is focus on not chasing darkness, but by turning on the light and yeah. then allow the light to do what it does. So right. give Jesus more press than Trump. To give Trump the prayer and give Jesus the press. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, well, I said plant, plant the seed. Oh. So. Amen. Hey, man. So, so I, I'm glad you brought that up, though, because what I'm finding that, that matters in this whole situation, I think this whole situation has spun us down to this fundamental issue, is that all these crises that are converging together <clears throat> upon us as a nation and as individuals, what it has caused me to realize is that now, you know, most folks are not allowed to go to the assemblies to the place that they had confidence and assurance in. And God is trying to get them to focus on their own personal, individual relationship with Him. Come on now. Come on. I am not at all alarmed by the fact that I can't assemble at that building anymore. Praise Him. Because I have a relationship with God. Come on now. And this whole situation has served to intensify my relationship with him. Come on. It has served to cause me to become, in a sense, kind of isolated to be alone with him. Now, what that says is, is that if the church in America is going to be in winning souls to Christ, then you got to be like rather than talk like. It's one thing that you to talk like. Oh wow! It's another thing for you to show up in the situation, and you are like. And all right, Amen. Amen. And, you know, which means he loves you. Know, you're like for racism. You're you're like for homosexuality. You're like for all forms of dogma. And oh, what that means is, is that you're not going to have to become drop dead serious about your commitment. Come on now. Let your light shine. Come on. Because if you show up and don't know light shine, why my folks don't listen to you? That's what I'm saying. Why don't you just sit down. <laughs> Shut up. You, want, why, why? you ain't no different from my mom. You gonna try to tell me how the homosexuality wrong when you're sleeping with the women in the church. Shut up. Okay, hey look, the green leaf. The green. <laughs> that's what they see. And yeah. that's why we ain't got no problem because they'll tell you quick. So you quick to put out the week we gays are homosexual, but you got diggers and pastors in churches sleeping with women, and you ain't saying a word. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Can I get a witness? <laughs> and well, we do if we want to listen to us, if we want well, if we want God to use us, 
then we are going to have to be purified. Come on, sir. We are going to have to be committed to a devout, absolute and total surrendered life to God. And that, no, that's scary. When I say absolute and total surrender, I know that I know that makes people want to run. Come on now. But that is in fact what God is asking for in this whole kingdom thing. Yes, sir. He's asking 